guys welcome to my youtube channel this is nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another episode of etsy shop critique today i am doing a critique on the store called not perfect designs if this is your first time i'm watching my youtube channel or visiting my youtube channel make sure that you subscribe to it for to learn all about etsy and I do a lot of Etsy tutorials as well as critiques to help businesses out there, small business, um, thrive on Etsy. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So thank you, Lisa, for allowing me to do a review of your beautiful shop. So let's go ahead and get started. So I did um, an audit on this actual listing right here. So the first thing I want to talk about is product photography so in my opinion it's like the most important thing when you have a photo is going to be the deciding factor whether that person is going to buy from your shop that's the first thing um, a potential buyer is going to see is they're going to look at the photo it's not the shipping cost it's not the customer review it's not the pricing of the item itself it's going to be the actual photo so the photo has to be very enticing it has to be, it has to look amazing. The person going to want to click on it. Even if they stumble on your listing by mistake and they weren't looking for what you were look for, what you sell, the picture should entice them enough to say, I wasn't looking for this, but you know what? I have to have it. I love it. So cute. Or this would be a great present for, for such and such. So you have to make sure that your photos are very very compelling because it is critical to the success of your Etsy shop um, a bad photo could definitely prevent you from making a sale so you want to make sure that your photo is clear um, it has it uses natural light no flash that you show the item really really nice with a clear simple background that when the person is actually looking at the actual listing they know exactly what they're buying there shouldn't be no confusion on what they're looking at or why they should buy it. It should be very clear and easy to understand what exactly they're buying. So I think you did a really good job um, with your photos. I think that um, I know exactly what I'm looking at. I know it's a pumpkin um, and it looks like it's a pumpkin for for decoration. I was a little, I, th I thought maybe in the beginning it was um one of those little things that you use to put like pins or like needles. I thought that's what it was in the beginning. So I don't know if it's just me, but I did think about that. However, do I think your photos look nice? Yes, they do. Do I think that um, they could look a little bit better? Yes. Um, I think that some of these have like a little bit of um, like the background is a little grayish. And right here you have like a shadow. Um, I think that could be an easy solution. Um, by taking the photos outside, like natural lighting like this is so pretty. Um, however, do I think that you have overall good pictures? Yes, I do. However, um, you could improve on making the photos a little bit, maybe playing with it um, using like a software like Photoshop where you could play with the lighting, you could remove unnecessary shadows, you can make it look more vibrant. Um, the first photo should be very, it should be the photo grabber, the one that people see and automatically love. Um, even though I do know what I'm buying and, and it's really clear and it's beautiful as well, um, I do believe that you could improve in your pictures a little bit better. You've done a really good job at showcasing the item from different angles, um, from rotating it from the bottom so people could see it, having one that's very up close and you have filled up majority of your photos as much as you can so great job on that another thing I would recommend is putting a call to action so having a photo here saying um, favor this item and then having like a little arrow pointing to the heart that way for potential buyers that maybe they don't buy at that current moment they could favor the item and later on in the future when you add additional products to your shop or you have like a sale XC will notify those people that favor your items that there is a promotion going on and they'll get that little notification. Um, also, I would do a call to action saying, click below 
to view item description and to learn more about this product. Maybe even have um, click below to learn more about this Thanksgiving pumpkin decor, kind of like telling them what exactly it is in case there is someone out there that might run into the picture and not really know 100% what is the use of the pumpkin. That way they know exactly what it is that is a piece for decoration. Um, I will also have the item used, so maybe stage like a table or something that you could put the, the pumpkin on top of the table, use it for decoration to show it off. I think that's a really, really good way to showcase your item because there are people out there that want to see the item being held, worn, used, depending on what you sell, but they want to see it in a practical sense. Like they want to see it used so they could have an idea of how it would look in their home. So are your pictures horrible? No. Can your pictures look better? Yes. Um, have you done a good job of at least doing the essentials of taking a picture, to doing the different angles and doing multiple pictures? Yes. So good job for that. Um, I would just definitely work on the shadows, making sure that all your photos are the best they could look because you are in a niche that is very competitive. So therefore you have to stand out from everyone else in order to be the top person selling what you sell. Um, if you don't, then you, you know, you fall on the bottom with everyone else and you would never make the sales that you really want to make. So definitely work on your photos. If it's hard for you, because I know that as an Etsy seller, there's so many hats that we have to wear. I would recommend maybe hiring a photographer, maybe buying a light box um, or doing something like that. Maybe paying someone else to do it for you, which is their profession and they could do really, really quality photos for you. So these are my suggestions for your photos. The next thing I want to talk about is your SEO also known as search engine optimization. As you might know already, this is very critical in people finding your products. Um, every tool that I use on this video, I will leave the link below so you guys um, could follow along. And if you need to use any of these, or if you never heard of them, you can at least have the link to it. Um, I personally use XE rank because it's one is free and it's for XE sellers and it helps you find um, keywords it helps you look at your competitors' keywords. It makes you. It helps you so many different ways um, to improve your Etsy shop. Now, um, looking at this particular listing, I'm using Etsy Rank. A lot of the keywords that you currently have are very oversaturated, and what what I mean by that is, if you go here, if you see that it says very high, that means that there's a lot of people using that same particular keyword. So there's two things going on in your shop. One, you're using keywords that are too competitive. Everyone else are using them. So therefore, it's very, very hard for you to get found organically. Also, if you were to run or if you run or if you were to run an XE ad in the future, your cost per click is going to be on the higher end because you're using keywords that are very competitive. So therefore, when a lot of people are using those same keywords, and people are running ads using those keywords, you will pay more per click. Um, so that's a disadvantage as well. Another thing is understanding who to target. Target audience is so important. Right now, some of your keywords are targeting anybody and everybody. So therefore, even if you get some clicks to your listing or you get some views or some impressions, um, it doesn't matter at this point because those people are not interested in your product. So therefore, you might see sometimes a lot of people say, well, I have a lot of views or I have a lot of clicks, but I'm not getting sales. That's because you're not targeting your audience. It's so important that you sync in your account with Google Analytics. I have a video on that. Set up your Google Analytics. Know who your demographic is, who your audience is, and then target to those people but you have to learn that because that's a big thing for online marketing. That way, when you do run a Facebook ad or you run a, a Google AdWords PPC ad or you do an XE ad, you know who to target. Now, XE doesn't really um, target by demographic. It targets by the keywords. However, on Facebook, 
you'll be able to go spend money and target the person. Like you could say this person, uh, the persona is 20 to 50 to buy my product. They're women. They live in this area. Um, there are, they, this is a specific keywords that they look for. Like you'll be able to target it a little bit better. However, you definitely want to work on that. The more you do it, the more you understand. Um, don't get discouraged. If you do ads and you're not making money, don't do not get discouraged. You have to keep, you have to spend some money to make money in any e-commerce platform. I sell on Amazon and I also sell on Etsy. You always have to spend money to make money regardless. Um, if you do it correctly, the money that you make, you'll make it back and you'll make double. So that's the difference between people spending and not making money or spending, but then they're making it back and double. So you want to be the second person. Now, when you use a word like rustic or you use a word like played, that's too broad. You're targeting anybody. Played could be a shirt. It could be a design for a couch. It could be a shirt, that a dress that has played. It could be a purse that has played. It could be a sock. It could be pretty much anything. So therefore, you are targeting everybody and anybody. So anybody that types in the word played on Etsy might come across your listing. Let's say you did rank for it or they found you somehow or they went to the fifth page of Etsy and that's where they saw you. Yeah, you got the, the view, right? Because someone saw you. However, you're not going to get any sales because these people are not interested most likely on your item. They're not looking for a pumpkin. They're looking for other things. If you look, if you type in the word played, one, oversaturated, 219,000 other people are using it. So therefore, it's not a good keyword. Two, look at all this. This played is more for fabric, you see, or designs. But look at this. It's, it's so many different options. So now you're pretty much targeting anybody and everybody. You're not targeting your audience. Someone is actually looking for what you sell. So therefore, you need to get rid of that keyword as well. Um, even if the keyword was low competition and it was a good keyword to rank, it wouldn't be the right keyword for you either because it's not realistic to what you sell. Um, something like this, pumpkin decor, that's more uh, targeting your audience because if I was looking for a pumpkin for decoration, I would put decoration for the house, pumpkin decoration or pumpkin decor. That's what I would type. So what I would do is take that keyword, put it in the get keywords idea. It's going to be hard because you are in a competitive, competitive niche. Just keep looking for keywords. Do the grunt work. It does take a lot of work. You're going to have to do this for every listing that you have. Kind of sit through it and really think about what people search for. Don't just use any keyword. Don't just use fall, weather, season. Don't, like, don't do that. Like, be very specific to what you sell and kind of go through that and go that route. Now, as you can see, there's so many people using, you see, the keywords that you're using. So therefore, this is another reason why I was saying that your photos have to be spectacular because there's so many people competing with you already as it is. It's really hard to find keywords that you could rank organically for. And on top of that, if you run ads, you're going to spend a little bit more. So you better make sure that your photos are incredible. So therefore, you have that balance of I'm competing in a really busy market, but I could still make money and I'm running ads and it costs me a little bit more, but I'm making it in the back end. That's what you have to um, consider. Um, as you can see, it's, it, I haven't found any low competition um, this one says fake pumpkin. I don't really think that goes with yours. This would be, would have been a good keyword, but however, I don't think this describes a, what you're selling, which is a pumpkin for decoration. Um, wood ladder decor. I wouldn't get that one either. Maybe this one, I don't know if yours is knitted. I'm not really sure. I think it's more fabric, but, um, if you have any that are knitted, this will be a good one. Um, ivory pumpkin, yours is kind of ivory, I guess. Um, yeah, so you're going to have to come through here and kind of go through this whole list and kind of keep looking and keep finding little pumpkin decor. That might be a good one right there. You see, that's a good one.
So that's what you do. You keep doing that. You do it. You create a piece of. You take a piece of paper, or you can use your notepad on your computer and start jotting down these keywords. Once you find 13 good keywords, you want to go back to your listing and do exactly what you did. You did a good job placing the keywords. You will put all 13 or as many keywords as you can here. Your first 160 characters, which is right on the top, you want to include that main keyword. So let's say you do find one that really describes your item to the T. So let's say you did rank for, you found a keyword that was low competition that said um, orange pumpkin decor. Let's say that was the keyword. So you put it here, orange pumpkin decor. You will use that one as the first one. Why? Because that's an SEO factor. And for SEO, one of the factors for the algorithm is placing the most important keyword in the beginning and also in the beginning of your listing description. This tells Google or any search engine such as Bing, Yahoo, Axions, etc., what your page is about and what you sell. And therefore, when somebody types it in on Google, that your listing will pop up as one of those options that they have to click on. Now, you have to work, you have to make sure that your first 160 characters that is right here, this section right here, is enticing and well written because that's what people see when they search in the search engine. So for instance, um, so let's go back to your listing. This is what people see on the on Google search engine when they search for pumpkin um, decor. This is the first 160, you see? So you want to make sure that this is enticing. So that way the picture, the person, whoever's shopping, will click on it and actually visit your shop. They will feel, they will want to go and, and click on it and look at your shop. So you want to make sure that you have an enticing um, meta description there. Mind you, I think I did the audit on, I thought I did it on this one. I apologize. I actually did it on the, on this one here. Sorry about that. I was just looking at the keywords right now. Um, so these are the ones I did it on. So let's look at the listing audit again. Yep, this is the one. Yeah, because we were talking about plate and rustic. Okay, so perfect. So make sure that your listing description um, is, is enticing. That way when somebody clicks on it, um, now, I'm sorry, that way when somebody looks at it, they'll click on it and want to go to your shop to actually buy your product. Um, so, so you put the keywords here, you put the main keyword in the first 160 characters, you sprinkle the keywords throughout your listing description, and then you make sure you use all 13 keywords on here like you did. So in that sense, you have that. You did a good job with that. You just need to change your keywords. Now, the third thing that we want to talk about is your listing description. So keep in mind that the picture is what made them like stop and click, right? The SEO is basically what made them found your item is what, how they found you. But your listing description is what's going to close out the sale. So your listing description, keep in mind, should include anything and everything about your about that particular item that they're buying. So it should, you know, describe what you're selling. It should be easy to read. It should be into, into small sections that way um, they can navigate it easier. And it should include like how to order, description of the item, color, size, shape, um, shipping policy, return policy, exchange policy, how to contact you. These are all important things to have to build the credibility, to avoid unnecessary messages, and also to make the sale. Um, I'll give you an example of my shop. So this is a new shop I started for entrepreneurs where I sell like logos and SEO packages and etc. So you go in here and if somebody was interested in buying this actual product, um, I have a description of it. I have how to order, what you will receive, returns and refunds, and I even have a backlink at the bottom that takes them back to my homepage. A lot of people have the tendency that when they finish reading, they'll click on the back button and leave your actual XC shops. So you want to avoid that. So by adding a backlink on the bottom, it helps them 
stay longer in your Etsy shop. And therefore, by having it into sections like that, like I just showed you, it really helps the person go straight where they want to read. So if they, they already know what they're getting, they just want to know about the returns, they know where to go. They don't have to read this bulky paragraph with 20 different things in it. You have to work on your listing description. I recommend separating it into sections um, and then spacing it out. If this is a new sentence, making sure there's a space between this word and this word here, uh, spacing it out and giving more details. I feel like you need a little bit more. Um, having a backlink to your main page um, is going to be very, very useful and breaking it into sections like description, how to order, what's included, the color, shipping policy, how long it takes you to prepare, etc. Make sure that you, it, that's why it's called listing description because you're describing what you listed. Do not start putting personal stuff. Do not put reviews in there. Even add backlinks to additional items. You could say, click here to view matching items. If you have anything else that particularly goes with that product, or you have this one here, which is a blue one, and this one's kind of the green one, you could say, click here to view green plate pumpkin. If you have different colors, similar colors, do that. A lot of people might like this one, but they might prefer the blue one or vice versa. This is a great way to keep them longer in your page, longer interested in your products, and hopefully longer to the point that they will buy from you. But these are important things that you should include in your shop. Um, pay attention to small details. Do not overlook these details. It's important that you create what I call a killer description, which basically explains everything and anything they need to know about what they're buying. This way, it builds credibility. It avoids unnecessary messages, even though you're still going to get them because a lot of people don't read. But it will also help you in the future. Because if somebody was to open a, I don't know, like let's say a complaint about your shop and they said that you never explained to them anything and they didn't know, you know, the size or whatever. If you have it in there, Etsy will, will take your side. You don't have to worry about getting a strike on your shop or having to give a refund when a refund wasn't, um, you know, needed because the person just didn't read. So make sure that you include everything in there that you could think of. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, or one of the last thing is the curation of your shop. And it's important that you take the time to look at your competitors, see what they're doing that you're not doing. Look at the most prominent shops. You, you will notice that they have a banner that has their, like their social media links. They have their website links. They have the hours of operation. They have different pictures um, of what they sell. They have the most spectacular pictures. You have to do that. Do not overlook small de details and dress up your storefront. You know, your picture is nice. Can it look better? Yes. I think that you could change this picture to a more amazing photo. Now, I do like your logo. I think it's very, very cute. So I will keep that the same um, how it is now. And I like the fact that you have a picture of yourself that I could actually see your face. A lot of people have a picture and you can't really tell who they are or, or the picture is very, it's like a full body picture. I think for an Etsy shop, it's better if you have an actual picture of the person. So um, you did a really good job with that. I like the fact that you have a tagline. I like the name of your shop, actually. I think a lot of people have complicated names. I think yours is very, very cute. So I like the name of your shop. Um, I like the fact that you have an announcement. Um, you have great reviews, so you're doing a really good job with that. So I won't talk much about that. You have your About Me section filled out. I will add your links here to your Pinterest and Facebook and anything else that you have. Um, your photos in your About Me, I think, could... could need a little bit more work only so people can know exactly what they're looking at. Um, I would even add maybe pictures of you working. You, if you don't want to take a picture of you necessarily, you could do a picture of like maybe of your back and you're sitting like working on something. Those are really nice. People are emotional buyers. They want to connect with you. They want to know who they're buying from. So having little things like that does help and make you stand out. Um, great job with, you know, um, speaking of who you work with, who are the shop owners, 
A lot of people don't do this or they don't spend the time doing it. Um, so it's important to do that. It's very trustworthy for people to see other people. So that's really good. Your shop policy, I will add more stuff. Um, that way people have a, a clear understanding of everything. And there's no, there are people that are going to read everything from your shop. There are people that are not going to read, they're going to buy, and then they're going to complain later that this was never told to them. So you have to fill both needs. The people that actually read and the people that don't read, that way you're covered as a business owner. And you want to make sure that you don't overlook things because you want to treat this as a real business. You want to make sure that you take the time and you do everything and anything um, to answer every question, to make sure that you did everything you were supposed to do in your shop. Do not overlook small details. If you have a story about yourself, how you got started, share that. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, you have a beautiful shop. You have beautiful products. That's the thing. And I feel like you have the making to make a lot of money with your products. I think um, it's going to be seasonal for sure. Only because you're selling fall decor. So you will do really, really good in fall. Um, and then it's gonna you're going to have that slope. But you also sell, as you can see here, Easter. So I don't know if you're going to plan to make this more of a, like um, every type of holiday. I think that will help you more. Because if you could do that, then you could target people year round. And always make an income. Um, overall, though, it's is is great store. Um, you do definitely need to work on your banner. Need to work on cohesiveness, making sure all your photos have the same background. Um, you want to make sure that when somebody looks at a photo, they know all oh, this photo and this photo comes from the same shop. Um, that's having a cohesive brand that everything goes together. Now, the last thing I want to talk about um, as an Etsy seller is two things. One is QuickBooks. If you don't have a software tool right now that you're using to keep track of your taxes and to keep track of your expenses, you definitely need to do it. A lot of people say, I don't make enough money, so I'm not doing that. Do not. That's the biggest mistake you could do is start an Etsy shop or start an Etsy business to make more money and then later on owe, owe a lot of penalties and fees because you never paid your taxes or you didn't know that you were supposed to pay quarterly, so therefore you never set money on the side to pay for it, and now you're in a hole, or even owe more money than you made. So make sure that you take the time to talk to your local CPA to learn about taxes and regulations on your area. And I highly recommend signing up for QuickBooks. I have the link below. It doesn't matter if you sold one item or if you sold 100 items, you should always sign up for something like that because this is a real business and you have to treat it as a real business. Um, secondly was you have to pay attention to key performing indicators at least once a month. If you can't do once a month, I highly suggest to do it at least every three months quarterly. Now, key performing indicators is basically checking your metrics checking your Google Analytics, checking what's selling, what's not selling, um, and, and investing time in the things that are selling and not wasting your time in things that are not selling. That's a really important one. You have to make sure you take, you take this serious and you take self-criticism and you look at it and you really, really digest the situation and you really understand, okay, I'm doing really good on, on these type of pumpkins. These are not making me any sale. Let me remove them and add more of the ones that are actually working for me. So you make sure that you focus your energy on the things that are working and not on the things that are not working. That's the biggest lesson that I learned. So make sure that you pay attention to that. And if you have items that are your top contenders, making a robust line. And what I mean by that is making additional items that go with that particular item. That way you can sell matching items and you can increase your overall sales. That's a really good strategy to do in anything you sell. Um, E-commerce, XC, Amazon, it doesn't matter. That's a really good strategy to increase your sales. So these are my suggestions for your XC shop. Let's go ahead and look at your um, the links that I got from the other stuff that you gave me. Um, so, so this is your Instagram account. So really cute. You got the link there to go to your Etsy shop. 
let's click on it make sure it's working properly it is give me a follow um good job at posting your photos um making sure they're sized correctly uh, let's see if you post on a regular basis you actually do oh good so you do so you do post on a consistent basis that's good make sure that your caption is longer than this pumpkin patch keeps growing the put more when you do a um a posting online talk about what you're posting and then also do a call to action always do a call to action a call to action is tell the customer what to do say hey guys i'm, I'm keep growing my pumpkin patch here are some new photos that i'm putting up make sure that you click on bio link to view my shop or make sure to click to shop today or whatever it is but make sure you tell them what to do make sure you like this comment make sure you leave a comment below tell me which one you like in order for you to go viral or for you to get a lot of engagement on instagram there's three things that you have to do one use the right key hashtags two get a lot of engagement which means a lot of likes and comments on your posts and three um write a really really good caption therefore to increase the two things that you need engagement and likes um you have to do that on every photo um so if you put new in shop then next to it you after that you should say click bio link to learn more or click bio link to view the item so click bio link to shop now always always add a call to action i will even add more to this talk about the fabric talk about the color talk about how long it took you to do talk about how they could use it talk about I mean, just add, take your time, be detailed as possible. That way people um, will read and, and, and feel interested. You got to tell them what to do. People are not going to go and click. Um, good job of responding to people. A lot of times people forget to do that. You've done an excellent job. I feel like that's very important that you don't neglect people that take the time to like your stuff um, by simply saying thank you. I mean, we all live a busy life and you might forget once in a while. But if you do it on a consistent basis, it's wonderful. People feel good. They feel like their opinion is value. So make sure that you do that on a consistent basis. Um, but yeah, keep posting. Another thing is your logo should be here. So whatever logo you're using, the one that I said I liked, this logo should be the one here. You should have it all across your social media. The same. You, it shouldn't be different. And then also make sure your pictures are cohesive. Um, Actually, for Instagram, I think that they work really well. I think you've done a really good job with them. I, I love this here. Um, I like the fact that you have personal stuff, a little bit of personal. I think it's always, I love this picture here too. I think it's always great to um, brand yourself as well because this is your business. Talk a little bit about who you are, especially for new, for new followers. Do it at least once um, every two weeks or something because what happens is you get new followers and they don't know who you are. So it's always nice to go back in and say, hey, my, you know, for those of you, I know I have a, a new followers now. For those of you that don't know me, my name is blah, blah, blah. This is what I do. It, and it's nice to do that because then um, they get to know you. So it's important for you to do that. Um, for instance, this is I'm having a cohesive look. I try my best in my shop to have the same colors, to have a cohesive look. Try to answer the questions here like, the three W's, why they should follow you, who you are, and what you do. That's what your bio should be. Why they should follow you, who you are, and what you do. It's important to answer those three questions. Um, and then having a cohesive look like this, um, having the same color. This is me um, talking about who I am, how I got started. So you do the same, but for your own business. Um, having hashtags, you know, responding to people's comments. It's just a nice way to um, get engagement, increase, and so on. Um, let's look at your Pinterest account. Now, for your Pinterest, I couldn't find you. I clicked on the link, and it wouldn't work. And then I tried to find, search you, and I couldn't find you. Um, either way, my suggestion for Pinterest, I love it for Etsy. I have another account that I use for my Etsy shops, and I have, a, I have grown it to 330,000 monthly views. And I drove for the main month of July over 1900 to my Etsy shop, 1900 traffic. So it does work. I think from all of them, for all the social media like Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram and Pinterest are my two favorite. But Pinterest does a really good job because 
once people share your item, it could go viral and then other people share it and then it's forever like evergreen content that people share. I highly recommend, I have a video on using a software called Tailwind and to increase your, your followers, increase your pins automated so you don't have to do it organically. I did it organically for three months and grew it. And then I was like, oh, this is a lot of work. So I started using a software where sh I show a video on it, on how to use it. And it's amazing. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, but it this does work. Um, this is my personal Pinterest account. And I'm getting 180,000 monthly views. I'm trying to drive this to a million monthly views because the more monthly views you have here, that means more traffic you're sending to wherever it is, whether it's your blog, your Etsy, or affiliate links like I do. So I hope that this tutorial was um, resourceful for you and that you learned something new. If you have any questions, um, guys, feel free to leave a comment below. If you guys have any suggestions for Lisa that I didn't cover or that you saw something similar like hers and you would like to give her a tip, make sure you leave a comment below because I'm trying to create a sense of community that we all help each other grow in the Etsy biz in the Etsy world since I feel like we have there's enough room for everybody to be successful. So if you have any tips, make sure you leave them below. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day.